<clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? So this is gonna be the sixth uh, installment of this build video, or series of videos for this build here. And uh, if you notice behind me, we got one of the baffles kind of cut out and placed in there. So we got a layout figured out, you know, based on the design that we looked at. And uh, today I'm gonna to be focusing on duplicating that a few times to make our baffle thickness and then uh, some of the other trim work to get it uh, all put together. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting out some holes. Those holes I used, this custom jig I put together for my router. It's like a, a Jasper jig you can buy, but this one's extra large so I can go a little larger. And uh, we're gonna use this to do uh, a few things, but I'm also gonna be using a, a flush trim bit to copy that one a lot um, because it's already the right size I need and uh, I don't need to be running this more than I have to. Uh, you could individually cut out every hole with the jig every time if you mark the center correctly and they were all matching, but I want to ensure it's matching by using a flush trim bit and just copying everything as I go. So we'll step through that. Um, I didn't get any video of using this, but uh, <clears throat> very simple process. You got a little eighth inch pin, uh, you find center, you uh, choose the distance away from the router bit uh, like this hole right here was for uh, those cutouts. You p place the pin there and it cuts a circle out for you using a spiral bit. Uh, very handy. So uh, <clears throat> that is how I did that. So we're going to go ahead and get started on making these cutouts and uh, move on from there. It's getting exciting now. Alright, so this is the layout. We have three 18s and three 6 inch ports. And uh, everything barely fits on here the way it needs to. You can see how close the subs actually get together. That's the eighth inch. But uh, basically I can get one baffle per sheet. And I have uh, six sheets. And this is just not quite big enough to get two out of because this is a little bit wider than uh, the half of the sheet. But what I'm gonna do is save the rest for other parts and other boxes so it's not a big waste. And uh, I think the best way, since I have the first one built and it fits good and I like it, um, I'm just going to copy everything. So I'm basically just lay this out where I want it, lay a mark, cut it out, get it uh, close. Then we're going to take our jigsaw and we're going to cut out the circles close. And then once you cut out all that, you can take your flush trim bit, like I was using a long time ago, another video, this guy. And you can make it exactly the same. Uh, flush trim bit's very useful, but you don't want to cut out huge amounts of material with it. So uh, I like to actually come within a quarter to an eighth inch from the actual circle so that it's not having to eat a lot. You know, it saves your bit and it's easier on your router and you get a nicer cut. So we'll go through that, put you on a time lapse and we'll see a few of these come out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all six first and then copy.
check it out everybody we got the baffles in and it looks freaking awesome you can see the layout now of the 318s and three error ports Set as such these are from big ass ports go check them out on facebook really good product i'll we'll be running three of these things but you can see that all of the interior is done as far as woodworking I'm just going to go in there and clean it up and I'm going to fill all the holes today, do all the sanding, all the filler, make it match this bottom chamber where we came in and we patched all the screw holes. Then we'll do a good sand down. So it's going to be a lot of prep work and then we're going to put the back on and get prepared to uh, install amps and do some wiring. So uh, that's my goal today. Um, basically did the baffle all in a few hours. Just kept stacking layers. I gotta clean the glue bloopers and uh, do the sanding on that. But uh, you saw some of the time-lapse footage. I didn't get all of it because it was the same thing over and over again. But uh, you know, I progressively used longer and longer screws as I was getting deeper. So some of these screws are getting almost all the layers. And the thing is super duper strong. It's gonna have no, no issues with flex. And it looks awesome. So that's where we're at, everybody. I'll do some more sanding and get some cleaning done, and then we can get the back put on, clean out the car a little bit, kind of get caught up. But we're busy. All right, so here's another update. I haven't been getting a lot of film, just been working, working, working. Uh, not a lot of exciting stuff. Basically just uh, patched all the holes with the wood filler and straighten up this front piece so that it's flush. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. I uh, put the back wall on, it's three thick. And that little bump there is where the amps go. And we've got the battery tray mounted in as well. So pretty all straightforward. Nothing new here. Just put the back on and I'll put a little paint because that's what you requested. Didn't want to do much back there, so that's what that's going to be. So, up here, we're also ready to go uh, for the most part. I have a little more sanding to do, but it's pretty much ready for stain. I'm going to build the uh, front next, so we'll go over that. I'm thinking I'm going to come straight down from these 45s and then close it, and that'll be our wide opening that we can close down. So we'll have straight come down, straight come down, and then the rest is open here. And we're gonna layer the wall three times. And then we'll have a port opening that we can actually start playing with and shrinking and changing in order to get our tune right. But as far as back here goes, the only thing left is amplifiers and wiring. So I'll probably get the batteries in tonight and get them all juiced up, run the car a little bit, cause it's been a few weeks. And then uh, next time we come out, get the amps and get those wired in. And then uh, we're pretty much set to work on the front half of the vehicle at that point. Just gonna like, clean the wall up, get it set up, get the subs in there. And then uh, I think we'll put this door back on, get the door panels put together. He bought my door panels off my Jeep, as you can see right here. So we're gonna change the color on those and clean them up a little bit and get them mounted and wired with all the McLaren mids and highs. And uh, at that point we'll be ready to actually play this thing. I gotta poke some holes to the back for speaker wires, but otherwise it's almost ready. Ports come tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so pretty exciting. We'll keep, keep you guys updated. I can't go over the coolness of this. That is really cool. Anyway, guys, we'll check in later. All right, everybody. So uh, we've been working a little bit. We got two layers on the front. I'm gonna do a third, maybe a fourth uh, tomorrow. But tonight, I wanted to stain the interior of the lock since it's all ready to go. And as you can see, we installed some LED lights on the sides. And uh, so we'll be lit up, so at night, it should have pulled more like that. Very cool. Got the 
work light on here, so it overpowers it a little bit, but you can see the uh, inside box is ready to go. It's all been sanded down. So we're going to go ahead and stain it. I like to use uh, pre-stain before doing any staining. Uh, this stuff really helps a lot. Um, it exactly does what the picture shows. Um, and then we're going to go with a red oak stain on this one. Should go pretty nice. My favorite brand here is the Minwax. I've been using this stuff for about eight years. And uh, really, really like the brand. So that's what we're going to use today. So uh, what I like to do is get a old t-shirt or a bag of rags, something, uh, you know, old t-shirt material, white. You don't want a colored uh, cloth, you want white. And that's what you use to apply your stain. Wear gloves, have at it. Uh, the more coats you do, the darker it gets. The longer you let it sit, the darker it gets. End grains get darker automatically. But the uh, pre-stain helps even everything out so you can't get too much blotchiness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a whole coat of pre-stain on the whole interior here and then show you what it looks like. All right, so here's what it looks like with the pre-stain. It almost looks good enough to be done. I like the color of the pre-stain, but we're gonna go a little darker. That blue looks really nice. So now on to the actual stain. See what it looks like. All right, what's going on everybody? We got the inside of the box here stained. I'm gonna do a little touch-ups in a few spots, but uh, for the most part, she's good to go. We got one of the subs placed in here, just kind of see what it looks like. Looking pretty good. Got this wire traced out for some LED lights. So if I come over to the battery here and hook up my wire here. So I don't have a switch going yet. That's something I gotta do today or tomorrow. Stuff this wire in here. And it looks cool. I like it. Really, really like it. I think uh, some of these spots I need to add a little more stain to darken them up a little bit. Hopefully, I can get them to kind of match a little better. It's kind of my fault for uh, maybe over sanding in a spot or two. But I mean, for the overall, it's gonna be okay. At least everything's lined up. Just a few little spots, so. Hopefully I can go back and get those touched up. I think, uh, but everybody said don't worry about it. Me, I, I worry about those things. So, uh, hopefully I can make it look better. It makes me feel bad that that's showing up right there. But for the most part, it looks pretty damn good to me. Came out pretty awesome, especially once the equipment's in here. <clears throat> So today's goal is to install the three ports. I got the ports yesterday, so we'll check those out and uh, talk about those. And then uh, I gotta put a third layer on the front and then a fourth trim piece and maybe even a fifth trim piece just to add some thickness here so I have some room to actually play with a port. <clears throat> right now, if we back up, you can see the port opening. It's pretty large. I think it's tuned up in the mid 50s. I want to tune it into the mid 40s to kind of sync up with the rear ports as they're going to be tuned to about 22. I like to go an octave higher on the front and call it 44. So we're going to get around 44. So I got to fill in <coughs> these bottoms and then uh, I got to build nice well fit pieces. I got everything sealed up really nice. Um, but now we gotta do a beauty layer so that it looks good as well. Then we move on to the roof. I'm not sure what to do with the roof. I don't have any real plan yet, but I think I might make some cool little wood that comes down a little bit. Something, I don't know yet. I gotta cover the whole thing in some suede so it looks like a regular headliner. And then uh, we get the door panels put on. 
He is getting my door panels and my pillars. I've already painted the pillars. As you can see here, McLaren tweeters. So we're gonna toss those in as well. So busy, busy. Got a couple more days with this thing, I think, and then we'll be ready to actually fire it up. So pretty exciting. I think it looks pretty badass actually. Mm. Everybody said don't worry about the little screw up on some of those. So let me guys, let you guys uh, tell me what you think on that. I'm doing my best with it, but uh, overall, what do you guys think? Is it good enough? Because I feel like I'm being really anal over this. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna go figure out the ports and we'll go over that. All right, so these are the ports. Um, you get them from my buddy Ben over at BigAssPorts.com. Really uh, top-notch service, got them out to me in a few days. And uh, basically these are the VersaTune 6-inch arrow ports. These are really awesome because uh, they have these little snap together setups. So you can customize the length like this. You know, do whatever you want, and you got uh, different lengths, so it's pretty cool. He uh, pre-drills them, so if you want to mount them to a box or whatever you want to do, um, I'm going to mount midway in the middle of port. Half of it's in the bottom chamber, half of it's in the top chamber. So I'm going to epoxy one of the sections in. I think what I decided was these four-inch sections will be the ones I glue in. So I'm going to have three of these picked out from my set here and we're going to go, go epoxy these into the wall um, so that they're secured in there and then the other parts will end up getting uh, glued together using PVC glue uh, so we'll go over that you know you get that at your hardware store that way they don't move and then the top portion I'll probably leave disconnected so where I can uh, I'll just tape them together for a little bit so uh, it'll be easy to pull them apart and do a tune on it to get uh, different frequencies. So these are really awesome. Um, we'll go ahead and start playing with them. I'm going to paint some of them and then uh, we'll be good to go. Alright, so we're in the box. I'm going to get these things ready to put in. What I'm going to do is set this little tight and that's what you want but you're gonna set it just a hair under the lip here not much maybe an eighth inch and we'll epoxy it in and then I'm gonna get some tape and we'll be able to like kind of tape it in while the epoxy sets and I got this uh, mixing tray just a spare piece of wood and we'll be mixing this two-part epoxy on it real quick and then we'll wipe it all over the port piece and in the hole and we'll join them together and hope that it stays. And then I also have some CA glue that I'm gonna put around the edge uh, just to ensure it stays. So uh, let's get set up for that and we'll go through that. All right, so here's the port piece. I scrubbed it up a little bit with some sandpaper. You can't really tell, but uh, at any rate, we'll go ahead and open this epoxy get some out without making a mess on stuff. I'm going to use all of it. Then I get a spare piece of wood because I have lots of those. And we'll do some mixing here. This is five minute epoxy, so you kind of want to work quickly. Make sure 
gets really mixed well. That's important. And then I'm just going to take the port here and hopefully successfully cover it with epoxy. Place it in here. get a lot on the wood too. Hopefully that does it for us. We'll get it down that eighth of an inch. Just tape it on. Another thing I'm going to do since I'm right here is take some CA glue and tack it in around the edge too. So, unplug it.
and that should get us pretty secured in there. Hope that epoxy set a little longer and we'll continue putting more CA glue on it. Probably try to put some on the underside so it's got strength that way too. Right now it looks a little bit like it's still trying to move. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that for the other two and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, so we got all the ports painted up. There's a flat black on these. You can see we also put a notch in the back of some of the rear ones because they get close to the wall, back wall. So I give them a little gap. So now we're gonna go ahead and glue them into the vehicle. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. And when I painted these, I put some masking tape on the last little bit there so that the glue touched the plastic and not the paint. So get those out and uh, We'll put them in. All right, so we're gonna glue these in using some of this pipe concrete, and I've already glued together two segments here. This is as high up as I'm gonna glue for now, so that I have a lot of adjustment range. But uh, I gotta get these glued into the bottom of the box. So what I'm gonna do is be very careful not to get my wood cover in this, and we're gonna put a nice little. It'll work pretty fast, but you can put a nice glaze on this little connector. And then take your segment, stick it down. I usually like to twist it a little bit, but this is taking off so quick. Looks like it's already pretty much in there. And uh, that's how you glue them in. Let's move you over to this one. See if I can't get it to twist a little more before it goes. But once you do this, these never come out. Pretty much. They become one piece of plastic. twist and it kind of sets up right then and there that fast so we'll put the third one in and then we can plug the top of ports on and uh, we're just going to tape those for now for now we're going to go ahead and load the subs up and get the wiring in and wire them to those little holes we got some bolts and uh, we're going to do a serious parallel to get it down to the correct yeah, impedance so, let's get on it. Be sure to check out the website, keepinbase.com. We have all your product needs here from DC Audio to custom build options for those subs. We have some full throttle batteries available, box designs, and decals all here. And there's plenty more information on the website. Please come check that out. And then make sure you hit this bell notification. You always get the updates when I post videos. So that's going to be right over here. Thanks guys, please like and subscribe, and appreciate it.